It's time for munching. And mating. In the macrocystis or giant kelp. With your host, Dr. Bill Bushing. One of the best things about my job is that when I go to the office, I don't have to wear a tie with my suit. Wetsuit, that is. In today's episode, we will look at the surf perch family, Embiotosidae, and several of its members, including the walleye and pile surf perch. This family is only found along the west coast of North America. The surf perch family, Embiotosidae, was first introduced to the scientific world in November of 1853, when Louis Agassiz, founder of Harvard University's Museum of Comparative Zoology, published a paper entitled, On Extraordinary Fishes from California, Constituting a New Family. A San Francisco naturalist had contacted Agassiz about a black perch he caught with live young, although others had also observed live-bearing surf perch about the same time. Agassiz wrote, A country which furnishes such novelties in our days bids fair to enrich science with many other unexpected facts. And what is emphatically true of California is in some measure true of all our waters. This ought to stimulate to renewed exertions not only by our naturalists, but all the lovers of nature and science in this country. The embiotosids are often referred to as viviparous. That is, they give birth to their young live rather than releasing eggs. True viviparity requires that the young receive nourishment from the mother's tissues. Those with young carried internally that receive nourishment from their egg yolks are referred to as ovoviviparous. Surf perch young may initially develop utilizing nourishment from the yolk and then depend on food delivered from the mother's tissues as they develop further. Since the members of this family lack a pelagic egg or larval stage, they do not have the ability to disperse with the currents. Long pelagic stages generally are associated with high levels of gene flow between different populations and a lower tendency to evolve into different subspecies or species. One study of surf perch determined there were biogeographical barriers across the extensive sandy bottom of Santa Monica Bay and between the mainland and the Channel Island populations in Southern California. This limited dispersal ability has affected which species were able to populate the offshore islands like Catalina, which is missing some common members of the group. During the 1960s and 1970s, my students and I studied drifting rafts of detached giant kelp to determine what marine critters might disperse by hitchhiking on them. We were specifically looking for invertebrate species which had limited or no pelagic dispersal stages. These included brooders like some anemones and brittle stars. On occasion we found fish associated with these rafts using them for protection. Certainly surf perch could cross the San Pedro Channel or other barriers using this dispersal mechanism. Limited dispersal ability has also resulted in the evolution of 18 closely related surf perch species that are endemic to the west coast of North America. Due to limited gene flow, they have radiated into a number of different ecological niches and are a good subject for the study of sympatric speciation, the evolution of different species within the same general geographic region. 
It is interesting to note Louis Agassiz was a lifelong opponent of Charles Darwin. Yet the surf perch family he first described has become a classic example of how species may evolve from one another. The walleye surf perch is known to scientists as Hyperprosopon argentium. The genus name Hyperprosopon comes from the Greek words meaning above the face, a reference to the upward slanting mouth. Argentium is Latin for silver. Fossils of this species were found in geological deposits over one million years old. As indicated by its scientific name, this is a silvery perch with a bluish to purple back and large upturned mouth. There may also be a greenish tint to the body. However, the truly distinguishing feature is their large eyes. They may also have dusky bars on the body and a black edging on the pelvic and caudal or tail fins. This edging further distinguishes them from the closely related silver surf perch, Hyperprosopon ellipticum. They are generally 5 to 9 inches or 13 to 23 centimeters in length, reaching a maximum of 12 inches or 30 centimeters at an age of about 6 years. A typical 7 inch or approximately 18 centimeter fish is 4 years old. The extent of their recorded geographic range is from Vancouver Island, British Columbia, Canada to central Baja California, Mexico in the vicinity of the San Benitos Islands or Guerrero Negro. Walleye surf perch are considered abundant to common in central and southern California. Occasional from northern California to Oregon and rare north of that although some sources state they are common from Washington South. This species frequents shallow areas generally above 60 feet or 18 meters around kelp beds, reefs, and sandy bottoms. They may be found in the surf line or areas just behind it off sandy beaches. Walleyes feed on small crustaceans including krill, amphipods, and isopods, but will also eat small fish. In turn, they are food for harbor seals, least terns, brants, and double-breasted cormorants. Although small in size, they are reported to be an excellent food fish and are one of the mainstays for anglers fishing off piers. They were frequently eaten by Native Americans based on the presence of their bones in ancient middens or garbage dumps. There is also a small commercial fishery for the walleye surf perch. This species may form large schools of up to several thousand individuals swimming rapidly along sandy beaches and the rock sand interface near reefs during the day. At night, the individuals separate from the schools and feed individually. They are one of the few species along the California coast that is active at night. During this time, they usually feed on zooplankton within 10 feet or 3 meters of the bottom. Mating is reported to occur around November, but this may be based on reports from the waters off Mexico. The males mature earlier, undoubtedly because sperm production does not require the larger body size necessary in females for egg production and the carrying of young. However, females grow faster and live longer. Most are mature within the first year at about four and a half inches 
or 11 centimeters in length. During courtship, the males develop dark vertical bars and the pelvic, pectoral, and anal fins are yellow. Fertilization is again aided by the thickening of the forward part of the anal fin, as is the case with most surf perch. In this surf perch species, the embryos are apparently dependent on a connection to the mother's tissue for their nourishment, making them truly viviparous. The gestation period is about five to six months, and the young are born from April to June. Females are reported to give live birth to 5 to 12 young, each about 1.5 inches or nearly 4 centimeters, although there are reports of a litter with as many as 19 offspring. The young display narrow vertical bars. The pile surf perch has been called several names, including the pile perch, pile sea perch, and dusky sea perch. Even the scientists seem a bit confused as to what to call it. These fish were originally placed in the genus Rococcolus, or Ragged Lip, by Louis Agassiz, who first described the surf perch family in 1853. Then it was renamed Damalichthys vaca, which is the name it is listed as by both Dan Gotchel and Milton Love. However, it appears that the currently accepted name is Rococcolus vaca. Of course, one pile surf perch knows exactly what to call the other. Mary, Ted, Carol, or Bob. This species is usually a silvery gray, but occasionally appears more brownish on the sides. There may also be dark blotches, and they are usually silvery on the belly. The dusky or dark bar along the side below the dorsal fin is a distinctive feature, although it tends to be more pronounced in juveniles and may fade away in adults. The spiny front dorsal fin is lower than the soft dorsal fin, which may have fairly long rays. The fins may also be darker in color than the body. Pile surf perch have a deeply forked tail or caudal fin attached to a long base or caudal peduncle. There is usually a black spot behind the corner of the mouth. This species may be confused with its relative, the rubber lip sea perch, but they have larger lips and lack the black spot behind the mouth. Adult rubber lips are also much larger than pile surf perch. The Sargo, a member of the sea chub family, also has a dark bar, but is located further forward on the body. Its spiny dorsal fin is taller than the soft one behind it, and it also lacks the dark spot behind the mouth. Individuals are usually in the 6 to 14 inch or 15 to 36 centimeter range and may reach a maximum size in excess of 17 inches or 43 centimeters. Pile surf perch are known from Port Wrangell, Alaska, south to northern Baja, California, and Guadalupe Island, Mexico. They tend to be more common from British Columbia south into central California. The maximum depth reported was 690 feet, or 210 meters, but they are most common shallower than about 60 feet, or 18 meters. Off Redondo Beach in Southern California, they are said to move into shallower waters during winter and spring. These surf perch frequent reefs, kelp beds, piers, and oil platforms, and are also seen in shallow bays. The pile surf perch is active during the day 
and feeds as a picker on the bottom, selecting out individual prey rather than winnowing the turf for food like some other surf perch species. The mouth is slightly oblique to facilitate this feeding method. Pile surf perch prefer invertebrates such as hard-shelled mollusks, including mussels and snails, crabs, barnacles, and even brittle stars. They will also take mud shrimp and tube-dwelling amphipods. When they feed on snails known as wendel traps, their mouths may turn bright purple. There are molar-like teeth in their throats to crush the hard shells of their prey. Even the newborn pile surf perch can feed on mussels and tiny clams. Extending up the food chain, they are eaten by harbor seals, northern elephant seals, brants, and double-crested cormorants. This species was eaten by Native American tribes along the coast. Today, they are an important recreational target from Washington to California and there is a commercial fishery bringing in only about 200 pounds or 91 kilograms per year. These generally bottom-dwelling or demersal fish may be solitary, but they are more often seen in small groups or even schools of a hundred or more individuals. Pile surf perch are usually sexually mature in their second year at about 7 inches or 18 centimeters. Spawning begins in April off Southern California and May in the cooler waters off Oregon. Males mature earlier than the females. While courting, the males turn very dark, almost black in color, and may have dark spots on their snouts. Both sexes develop light yellow pelvic and anal fins. During this time, males leave the protection of the kelp forest, or reef, for mid-water. Here they hang head down in the water column, making them potentially easy prey for predators. Ah yes, what we men must risk for love. Their courtship dances are quite interesting. A single male may tend several females This rubber lip sea perch is cutting in on the courtship dance between two pile surf perch. I guess it is a little confused and needs to pay more attention in fish ID class and they are known to fight with or chase other males off. Here is a pregnant female. Their reproductive patterns appear to be subject to some controversy. 
One source states that the gestation period is only six and a half months, while another lists it at 15. Some of this confusion may be due to the fact that females may mate, but not actually fertilize the eggs until three months later. The young are said to be born in late June to early August. Dr. Milton Love indicates litter sizes of up to 50 young, while another source indicates only 3 to 10 are born at a time. The young often hide in thick algal cover until they are larger. The females grow faster than the males and tend to be slightly larger in length. Their maximum age is reported at 9 to 10 years. 